Yeah, so we want to remove all the friction, right? So we want to remove the friction of having to create an AWS account or even pulling out your credit card. Let's just give you an environment or sandbox for you to play in where you don't have to worry about falling asleep while the server's still running and waking up to a huge bill. Did you miss this? This was actually during Swami's keynote in reInvent 2021. It was just dropped in there as a way to help as many people as possible get into data science and machine learning. Amazon SageMaker Studio Lab, this no cost environment with no setup really required at all and no AWS account. I really wanted to find out more about this because I think this is going to be instrumental in 2022 to help as many people get into this space, this really important part of IT, that being machine learning, artificial intelligence, and data science. So I sat down at the very end of the reInvent week with Michelle to find out more. I'm Michelle Monclova and I am a, a PMT at Amazon SageMaker. And I've been at Amazon for about three and a half years. I think this announcement from this year is very exciting because it really lowers the barrier to entry for people to start with probably data science and machine learning. That's probably fair to say. Um, tell us a little bit about Studio Labs. Yeah, so Studio Labs is meant to really give a new aspiring data scientist an environment where they can just focus on the data science. So let's let's take away all the work required to set up an environment or to configure your IAM policies and, you know, forget about which sort of server you want to select for your training or your, you know, inference. Let's just give you an environment or sandbox for you to play in where you don't have to worry about falling asleep while the server's still running and waking up to a huge bill. So that that's what it's about. Um, it's, I'm really embracing the open source. We're embracing the open source Jupyter lab environment, um, the Git environment for code management. And um, you can install any of the libraries that you want. So you can um, get going on you know, your projects and experiments. We offer both uh, CPU compute as well as GPU compute for people to start their, their experiments. So if you navigate to studiolab.sagemaker.aws, you're greeted with this uh, sign-in page. I've already got an account, so I'm going to sign in. But if you don't have one yet, you can go to request free account down the bottom here. Let's go to sign in. The interface to SageMaker Studio Lab is very friendly. You can see details of the project you're working on here. This is where you get to choose whether you want to jump straight into a Jupyter Notebook environment and choose if you want a CPU environment or a GPU environment. Um, but there are also bits and pieces of documentation. Um, so let's jump into the actual environment itself. I'm going to click on Start Runtime. And after just a moment, you end up with uh, this open project button at the side. So let's go ahead and click that. And it loads up a fairly familiar looking interface if you're familiar with Jupyter Lab. So we want to remove all the friction, right? So we want to remove the friction of having to create an AWS account or even pulling out your credit card or, or configuring an environment. So let, we're trying to make it as frictionless as possible. But as you could see yourself, you still had to go through the process of requesting an account and then um, and getting your account approved. We've approved all reInvent um, attendees um, so they can get going immediately, you know, as our first trusted set of folks to get going with. And we are slowly letting more and more people in every day um, just because we do have a lightweight approval process on our end. For sure. So, so it's uh, it's in preview now, I suppose. Technically, that means it's in preview. Early access uh, sign up available. Uh, sorry, I can yes. put a link below this video, and people can register their interest there to 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 get Correct. access to this as soon as possible. That's um, that's really cool. So, um, I got to ask you this question: um, Did you have any kind of internal friction with we want to make this service, but we don't want to make people sign up to AWS, and we don't want people to pay for it? Uh, was everybody on board with that? You mean internally with, with yes. our senior staff? Yeah, I can imagine um, sort of like rocking into the meeting and saying, okay, we're going to do this. And by the way, it's going to be free and they're not going to have an AWS account. <laughs> I don't think, I think everyone was on board. We all saw this big skill gap. And, you know, and you mentioned it earlier about education being really important for Amazon. So true, which is if you look at some of the stats today, we have trained over 140,000 people with our whole deep racer program in over 150 countries. 
We've trained a million people this year alone with some of our assets like D2L and AWS MLU and our training and certification programs. So we're all on board to figure out how to close this skill gap for in the machine learning world. And, and I, I think our executive team and our leaders are always thinking, how do we do it better and faster? So uh, we talked to him about you know, reducing the, the friction, especially in some parts of the world where credit cards are not common. Um, we really just want to address that and really just you know, figure out where we're embracing. How do we democratize this whole ML concept? So no, we, we didn't really get much pushback at all. We proceed with caution, of course, yeah. because you know we don't want any you know bad actors coming in and doing anything. But definitely, the, the concept of how do we enable people, zero pushback on that. Um, this is my environment, and you can see that I've been working in here already. I've got a couple of notebooks, and yes, I've got some play around pretend code in here already. Let's go ahead and press the plus button um, and you can see the options you have to create a brand new notebook. You can, of course, drop to the console just as you could in a normal Jupyter Lab environment. But I'm going to go ahead and open up a new notebook. Uh, you'd notice that uh, the previous notebooks that I had open are there. I mean, I haven't been in here for days, um, but those notebooks are still open. Let's close those down um, and we can experiment around here with a little bit of code. Maybe what I could do here is just take some of the boilerplate getting started code from TensorFlow, throw it in here and see what it takes to get TensorFlow running inside of this environment. Something I really like on the TensorFlow website is actually if you scroll down here, you've got just this snippet of code here, um, which allows you to get up and running really quickly um, using TensorFlow. So let's go ahead and just copy that code and bring it over into my Jupyter Notebook environment. Now, I want to put together something that looks reasonably good. So uh, this is a TensorFlow demo in SageMaker Studio Lab. And I'll change that to a markdown and shift enter on that. So at least I've got a title in there. I'm just going to paste that code in just there. So um, you do sign up to get access into this environment and um, that means then you do have an account, but it also means therefore that you can save your work and come back to it the next day, right. which probably makes it a little bit different from some of the offer other offerings are out there. So you can, you can actually work on a project and keep working on a project and keep it rolling inside of uh, SageMaker Studio Labs. Yes, yes. Um, I know you were one of our early testers, so thank you for reminding me to to, to mention that part. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so you have the ability of, um, you know, setting up your environment the way you want. So if you want a particular version of a Python library, go ahead and pip install that. And um, you're, every time you log in, you get a user session. And that user session will last 12 hours if you've selected CPU, or it'll last four hours if you selected GPU. And that Jupyter Lab environment that you have that's running is, is perpetually saving. Like every, every five minutes or so, it's going to take a snapshot and copy your environment off. So if your user session ends, you know, you, we are saving your work. Um, and you can return right, you know, exactly where you left off. Um, if you are running a training job and your user session ends, you can come back and um, pick up where you left off. There is a lesson in our Dive into Deep Learning D2L, which talks all about checkpointing, which is something you probably want to do if you have some long running jobs. You can do your checkpointing and when you come back to return, mm. um, you, know, you, you can at least go back to your last checkpoint opposed to starting all over again. I, I, I just got this question a couple of hours ago, which is if you know you're getting ready to launch you know, let's suppose you're working on some notebooks and you only have two hours left in your user session um, and you're getting ready to launch a big training job. Perhaps what you want to do is end your session, restart it. So you start with your fresh four hours or your fresh 12 hours before you hit start again. Hmm. And um, unlike you know, other platforms, you know, we'll keep running even if you shut down your laptop. Obviously, I'd probably split this apart if I was doing this in a little bit more uh, detail and I wanted to dip into this code more closely, but let's just go ahead and run this and see what happens. So clicking on the run, 
and it's uh, erroring here that it doesn't have TensorFlow installed. Um, but that's okay. I can go ahead and install that inside of my environment. Once I've installed it, the library will be there and it'll be there forever and a day after that. So let's uh, go up here and add in a cell underneath here. We'll just put pip install TensorFlow. We'll enter on that and this is going to do it as part of this uh, actual notebook. You could drop to the command line and do it instead if you wanted to. And you notice what it's doing now is it's installing the TensorFlow library into this environment. So this environment is fairly vanilla, um, but you can go ahead and install your own things. Okay, so that should have finished by now. Scroll all the way to the bottom. Um, let's go ahead and run our code again. So press play and off it goes. And there you go, it's downloaded the data set and it's, it's training. So it's training the model. Let's just check what this is. So this is the handwritten character data set. Um, and it's going ahead and training a model, just like that. So a free environment, I've put some sample code on there, I've installed the TensorFlow library, and straight away, just like that, it's working. Obviously, you can save your work locally, locally, and I mean by locally, I mean on the instance itself, but you can save your work out to Git, right? Correct. I guess that's a huge integration point with working with fellow students, but also um, pushing your code to go somewhere else. Correct. Yes. So um, tight integration with Git, you have your whole versioning control, it's open source. And we knew that was an important ask from a lot of our customers. So we're do, do, giving that as well as, you know, integration, of course, with GitHub. So you can put your, so you have a place to put your code. Yeah. And I suppose from the point of view of, um, I want to then, I, I, I've developed this thing. I've, I've started, I've spent a few months potentially um, working on this and making this look good. Um, I now want to really upscale this. I suppose this is then a launch point into SageMaker Studio inside of AWS at that point. So there is is there not, there's an integration path to go take your code from labs and bring it into the full-blown studio uh, environment. Yes, that's, that's, that's also a very popular question this week, which is, um, you know, we get some questions around, hey, how much more functionality are you going to put in Studio Lab versus when do I make that you know, leap to come over to Studio itself, SageMaker Studio itself, because there's a lot of functionality in there. It's, it's such a rich platform that it's not our goal to replicate that environment in Studio Lab at all. This is a starting point, but we're going to give you a nice path to get over to SageMaker Studio itself when you're ready. Today, we give you a pretty good cookbook on how to do it, you know, about how do you, and, and you'll see the menu items there as well. Like how do I export my environment and my artifacts? and then import them into my studio environment. That's today at launch. Um, definitely on our short-term roadmap to make that a one-click step to get over there. And there are some, and sometimes it's not, you know, sometimes there's better things to take advantage of when you're moving over from studio lab to studio as well. For example, the whole hugging face environment. We have specialized SageMaker DLCs that are optimized to run on, on some of our best instances um, for Hugging Face that we released earlier in the in the year. Um, the environment the environment that you get for St Studio Lab with Hugging Face are just you know for you just to see how Hugging Face works on these. Um, you know, our CPU right now is. T3 extra large, or and our GPU is G4D extra large. You know, very satisfactory instance types for you to gather the concept of how these hugging face environments are going to work for you. But when you move it over to SageMaker, they're going to be optimized for the best in class servers. And, and I know we had some new releases this week as well um, with with um, the servers with hugging face as well. Yeah, lots of announcements this week from a machine learning perspective. So that's been um, amazing to sort of get our heads around and we'll be digesting it, no doubt, for the months ahead. Uh, Michelle, thanks so much for joining me today to talk to me about uh, Studio Labs. Um, really looking forward to getting into it and maybe help sharing it as well with um, the students that I work with to help them to Perfect. learn machine yes. learning and do their to start their journey in machine learning data science as well. Um, What's the rest of the week look like for you? Are you are you beginning to ramp down, or does it just sort of like Ooh. crescendo into a big party at the end? Uh, well, the, the the big party is tonight, and yes. uh, but what what but we're what I'm seeing at least on my calendar is a lot of people who want to talk about you know 
the new services that they've been hearing about and a lot of requests from organizations that say, hey, I've got a group of people this would be perfect for. Can we please get them you know, approved quickly so we can start um, experimenting with some of our data sets? So um, right now it's a lot of ad hoc meetings. A, lot, a, a, a large inbox for you, I'm sure. Well, I very much appreciate <laughs> yes. you taking the time to talk to me today. Thanks so much. Thank and, you so um, much. Enjoy as much as you can enjoy the rest of reInvent. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.